The Boeing 747 is the biggest plane produced by the North American aircraft manufacturer. Or is it? It turns out that Boeing has a bigger aircraft called the Boeing Dreamlifter. Created for the express purpose to transport Boeing 787 fuselages, this platform holds the most interior space of any Boeing aircraft. So why don't we put some passengers in it? After all, with more space than even the proposed Boeing 747X, this plane would change the landscape of aviation and commercial freight forever. Let us dive into it. Hey, it's me, Nick here. If this is the fifth, sixth, or tenth video of mine that you're watching, then it's time to subscribe. The Boeing Dreamlifter, proper name the Boeing 747-400 Large Cargo Freighter, is an engineering marvel. Created from the shell of a Boeing 747-400, the Dreamlifter has a greatly expanded internal cargo area that can carry entire plane fuselages across the great American continent and beyond, from smaller Boeing 737s up to Boeing 787 Dreamliners, especially those that can't fit on rail or trucks. Boeing uses them to link its international production line from Japan and Italy to North Charleston and Washington State. It is essentially the Boeing equivalent of the Airbus Beluga. Fascinatingly, and unlike Airbus, these aircraft are not built from scratch, but rather from existing conversions. The four dream lifters that exist are from Air China, China Airlines, and Malaysia Airlines. Boeing acquired the 747-400s and converted them in Taiwan, hence why all of them come from Asia. The plane's unusual hump appearance and its initial subsequent lack of a paint job, thanks to the urgency required to do flight tests, led the Boeing Commercial Airplanes president Scott Carson to apologize to the 747 designer Joe Sutter, saying, sorry for what we did to your plane. So if it's somewhat easy and proven to turn a 747-400 into a Dreamlifter, why don't we do it for passenger operations? We can start by looking at what we have to work with. The Boeing 747 Dreamlifter nearly has all of the same specifications as the 747-400, although it is slightly longer by one meter or three feet or so, and it's also significantly taller at 21.5 meters or 70 feet and eight inches. And it's also wider in the middle at 8.38 meters or 27 and 6 inches, approximately 2 meters more than the 747-400. This gives us a total empty space of 65,000 cubic feet or 1,840 meters cubed. Let's look at filling this area with seats. We know we can divide up the area into two decks, and so if the upper level has a width of 838 centimeters and an average seat is 17 inches across, or 43 centimeters, then we can fit a total of 16 seats across, factoring in twin aisles. Now, that's quite complicated as it would mean a configuration of 5-6-5, which is pretty unrealistic, but we could fit in a third row in exchange for an extra seat and end up with a 4-4-4-4. Brutal, but not outrageous. A more realistic option would be 3-4-4-3, giving room for the bulkhead. At 45 rows of passengers on the upper deck, this would be 14 times 45 or 630 economy passengers. But what about the lower deck? The lower level has the same width as the Boeing 747-400 and thus we can assume the same configuration of 3-4-3 across with 17 inches of width. Now for the rows, the plane likewise has a similar lower level and we can assume around 45 rows, giving us 450 passengers on the lower deck of all economy. In combination, this is just over a thousand passengers or 1,070 souls. There would likely be room for business class passengers. Looking at how Lufthansa laid out its 747-400 series, they reduced the economy down to 308 and 53 business class seats on the lower deck, bringing out a new realistic total with two classes to 811 on our Dreamlifter concept. Still insane and still bigger than the A380. But let's say we filled up the plane. 
would it even be able to take off? The great thing about the 747 Dreamlifter is that it is actually has the existing power of the 747-400 and is a preferred aircraft for cargo operations. With these four engines, the Dreamlifter has a range of 4,200 nautical miles or 7,800 kilometers, fully loaded with a maximum payload capacity of 250,000 pounds or 113,000 kilograms, which makes it much more useful for passengers than say the impossible Beluga XL, which you can see right here. So let's crank out those calculators and start by figuring out how much all of these passengers weigh. If we were to say that the average person on earth weighed 200 pounds for a male or 170 pounds for a female, this will start to give us a pretty good idea of how much our payload will weigh. This may seem like quite a lot of weight compared to other countries in the world, but then again in the USA there are 24 hour buffets and their child soda size is the size of a child. With 811 passengers on board, roughly divided 50-50, this would be an average weight of 83.5 kilograms per person, for a total of 67,718 thousand tons, or 149.2 thousand pounds. That's half our weight gone from the maximum payload. With the other half, we still need to include luggage, say 20 kilograms per person, so that's 16,000 kilograms or 35,000 pounds, giving us only 29.4 thousand kilos for the rest of the plane. The bulkheads, the seats, the toilets, the entertainment systems, food, beverages, you name it, it all adds up. We might not even have enough for the second deck, unless we cut back on passengers, cargo or more. Perhaps with more powerful and efficient engines like the GE9X, we might be able to carry 811 passengers, but it is impossibly tight. I'll leave it up to the maths wizards in the comments to come up with the final passenger conclusion, but at any rate, this plane could probably carry 100 to 200 less passengers, but in far more comfort than any other plane flying today. Sans private jets, thanks to its truly enormous legroom. Well, Kind of. You see, there are some flaws with this aircraft that we also need to factor in. First of all, the main cabin is totally unpressurized, as in everyone on board would be freezing in flight and wouldn't even be able to breathe. This would require equipment to keep the passengers comfortable, or at least heavy coats to keep them warm. Plus, there are no windows currently installed in the fuselage, and any new design would need to require them, or TV screens to fake it, both adding tremendous weight. That being said, there are some unsung advantages of this plane. For one, at airports, this aircraft could simply open up its tail when at the gate and allow many passengers to board and leave instantly, saving plenty of costs and time at a turnaround. Because this plane also has the footprint of the 747-400, it can already fit into most airports around the world, especially those that are already set up for the 747 series. Unlike the Airbus A380 or other aircraft designs like turning the Antonov 225 into a passenger plane, this aircraft wouldn't require any special gates. It is also possible that the plane could be turned into a combi aircraft and be used for passengers on the top deck and commercial freight and cargo on the bottom deck, a tantalizing prospect for airlines in 2021 who require commercial freight to survive. After all, the Boeing 747-400 was actually used as a combi aircraft by KLM for many years for its trans-Caribbean routes from Europe. Overall, the Dreamlifter really just shows us how flexible the actual 747 platform really is. It is incredible that not only do we have multiple generations of passenger 747s, but also all of these insanely wacky designs like the 747 Missile Carrier and the 747 Dreamlifter. It is for these reasons that while we might be saying goodbye to trijets, goodbye to the A380, the 747 Queen of the Skies will be sticking around for a bit longer yet. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I could have not done it without the help from my Patreons and those who have supported me right from the beginning when I was a monorail channel. 
Thank you so much. Plus, I'd like to say check out www.foundandexplained.com for more in-depth articles, 3D models, and also some quizzes to test your knowledge. Have fun. <laughs>